A genetics professor clones his wife until he gets the exact version that he fell in love with. Professor Adam Slope explains to his wife, Dawn, that she's a clone of someone who died in a fire. Dawn refuses to believe this, and she slowly backs away, which leads to her falling from the attic's entrance. Before this unfortunate event, Adam hesitated in proposing to Dawn, who was still his girlfriend at the time. He tried shutting the rings box near her ear to wake her up, but Dawn remained asleep. Because of this, he resorted to cooking breakfast but kept throwing the burnt pancakes until he made perfect ones. After this, he surprises her with breakfast in bed. However, before he could pop the question, Dawn excused herself to the bathroom, leaving Adam uneasy. He then asked if he could come inside to tell her something, and Dawn replied it was alright if the situation couldn't wait. With this, Adam went inside and asked the big question. Dawn thought it was sweet and cute, but she chuckled, saying that no other woman would say yes to him in that situation. Adam smiled, saying he was thankful that he was asking her. Later that day, Dawn went to work in her glass-blowing studio. Her friend, Camille, asked how Adam proposed, and Dawn admitted that it wasn't in a bouncy house like her dream proposal, but it was intimate, sweet, and spontaneous. Meanwhile, Adam conducted his lectures at a local university, and one student named Emma seemed fond of him. After class, she asked if he needed a lab assistant, but Adam politely said no. Soon, Adam and Dawn got married. After this, they settled the papers regarding their insurance in case anything bad happened to either of them. One day, as Dawn worked in the studio, Adam called her and said he was cooking dinner. While they were talking, Camille went out. However, Dawn never got home, as the studio caught fire after a piece of ember flew from the furnace to a pile of newspapers. The door was jammed, preventing her from escaping, which ultimately led to her death. Soon, the police delivered the awful news to Adam. Days later, Dawn's funeral took place, and Adam recalled how he first met Dawn at an art museum. She was hidden behind a row of faces and he saw her between the little spaces, admiring her beautiful smile. He couldn't get her out of his head for weeks, so he returned to the museum and bought the vase that blocked his view of her. This was when Dawn first laid eyes on him. Adam would soon use that vase to contain her ashes. After the mass, Adam's friends consoled him, wanting to make him feel better. However, when he got home, he sulked in his grief and repeatedly called Dawn's phone to hear her voice in the voicemail. He then watched their wedding tape. For the following days, Adam couldn't fill out Dawn's proof of death form because signing it would mean that he was accepting her passing. One day, just as he was about to sign it, his lab experiment notified him that his cloning project was complete and successful. He then paused his current task to take out the cloned mouse, but as he placed the rodent in a cage, he suddenly got an idea. When he got home later that day, he found hair stuck in Dawn's brush. He then took it and drove to his lab, but just as he was about to start cloning his late wife, he stopped it. The following day, he rambled about the growth rate being a problem in cloning since they can't even grow a single organ in months. Hearing this, Emma suggested infecting the tissue with Werner syndrome, which speeds up the aging process. Because of this, he asked her if she still wanted to be his lab assistant, to which she said yes. Adam immediately dismissed the class, much to Emma's surprise. They immediately went to his lab, but before he let her in, he told her that their experiment would be ethically ambiguous. Still, Emma replied that she was all about the pursuit of progress. When Adam started with cloning, Emma realized that he was about to do it to an actual human. She immediately warned him that it was illegal and that he could lose his job. Realizing that Emma was against him, he told her to leave, which only made her feel guilty. In the end, she helped him out. However, she noticed that Dawn was growing too fast, but Adam dismissed it. Minutes later, Dawn's clone was complete, and he immediately took her to the car. On their way, Emma warned Adam that he'd have to teach Dawn how to function from scratch, but he didn't want to think of that yet. Just then, Adam noticed that Dawn had aged quickly. It turned out that he didn't normalize her growth, which Emma warned him about. Dawn soon died of old age, and Emma helped Adam dispose of the body through a furnace in his basement. Days later, they tried the experiment again, but this time, they first tested it with mice. Adam then allowed Emma to clone a mouse using a slower process. However, she took a sample from a clone, which resulted in the mouse exploding on her face. Adam then told her that she couldn't make a clone out of a clone. For the following days, they repeatedly tried cloning but failed over and over. They then realized that they could potentially cheat Dawn's growth for three months, so they started cloning her as an infant. Unbeknownst to Adam, Trout, the insurance agent, is doubtful about Dawn's death given that she died weeks after Adam purchased a million dollar insurance. Because of this, he decided to observe Adam and witnessed him carry a baby into his house, which happened to be Dawn's clone. Days later, Dawn grew up as a young girl and learned how to act. In one instance, she pointed to the vase that held the real Dawn's ashes, so Adam took it to the attic to feel less guilty about what he was doing. Days passed, and Dawn continued growing, 
and Trout secretly observed them. However, as she reached adulthood, her teeth started to deform. Adam also felt like he was raising a daughter rather than having his wife back because Don acted a little rowdy. That night, Don's parents, Rebecca and Harold, decided to visit Adam. Meanwhile, Don's clone noticed that she wasn't normal because her teeth fell out and she grew faster than Adam. Because of this, Adam decided to tell her the truth, and he led her to the attic where Don's ashes were. Meanwhile, Don's parents arrived, and Rebecca went around the house after Adam didn't respond. However, she caught a glimpse of Don from the attic, and she got so horrified that she demanded that Harold take her home. In the attic, Adam told Don about how she died, but it was hard for her to process the truth. She backed away as Adam explained further, but she ended up falling to her death. After this, Adam solemnly disposes of the body in the furnace, then he sadly rewatches his wedding tape. Days later, he goes to a therapist and tells her that he dreamt about cloning his wife, but she wasn't the same. The therapist reminds him that genetics is just a small portion of who we are, and the only way for Dawn to remain the same even when she's cloned is for her to be raised by her own parents. With this, Adam visits Dawn's parents and tells Harold that he can bring their daughter back if he clones her. However, this only earns him a slap in the face. The following day, Adam asks Emma to raise the clone, but she refuses. He then lashes out, admitting that he's being too much. This earns Emma's sympathy, so she gives in. As Emma raises the clone the way Don's parents did, Adam starts hanging out with his friends again. Months later, Emma brings a fully grown Don to Adam's house, but she's angsty and rebellious. As they live together, the clone has difficulty adjusting, and Adam slowly realizes that she's far from who his wife was. Still, he tries to propose to her, but Don rejects him. Later that day, he pleads with Emma to take Don back, but she detests the idea. Unbeknownst to them, Don is listening to their conversation, and she gets so confused with her purpose that she ends her own life. With no choice, they dispose of the body. After this, Adam puts the clone's ashes in a separate base, then Emma consoles him. However, he still plans to clone Dawn again, but this time, someone else will raise her. Days later, he brings the baby clone to Camille and asks her to raise Dawn for four months. She gets weirded out by his request, but she compromises. Adam then gives her a list of what the clone needs to accomplish so that it'd have Dawn's personality. However, Camille asks him to propose to Dawn in a bouncy house this time, saying it's what she actually wanted. She also insists on letting Dawn experience prom because it was a milestone for her. Unfortunately, when they let her, she goes home with her date, Wyatt, and she becomes so in love with him that she refuses to go with Adam. The following day, Adam expresses his frustration to Emma. She tries making some sense of the situation, but he disregards everything she says. He then attempts to clone Dawn again, but Emma stops him because the other one is still alive. Days later, Adam conducts an exam in class, but he gets so consumed by his failed experiment that he ends up yelling at a student. After this, Emma gets upset at him, saying that he needs to control himself. Adam argues that she doesn't understand what it's like to lose someone she loves, but Emma says that she does. That night, Adam tries reconciling with her, and he encourages her to share her story. Emma explains that her father died after he failed to get a heart transplant. She then says that losing someone they love changes them. Later, Adam goes to Wyatt's house, but the latter threatens to call the police. Adam isn't scared because he knows they'll just take Dawn away. He then offers to help Dawn, knowing that Wyatt is also witnessing her rapid growth, which he can suppress with medicine. Adam then tells Dawn that she has Werner syndrome and that she'll die if he doesn't help her. However, this would mean leaving Wyatt, so Dawn kisses him in front of Adam, saying that she'd rather spend her last minutes with him. On the other hand, Wyatt is desperate to save her, so he asks Adam for help. Enraged by what he just witnessed, Adam pretends to help them but injects Dawn with euthanese, which kills her. He then fakes his sympathies and returns to the lab. However, when Emma hears of what he did, she gets frustrated at Adam. She screams at his face, asserting that he'll never bring Dawn back because she's gone forever. Adam doesn't even flinch, making Emma realize that he'll never stop. Before leaving him for good, she expresses her disappointment with him and that she felt used. She then hugs him and goes on her way. Despite being abandoned, Adam clones Dawn again, and this time, he asks his friend, Hewan, to raise her. However, she doesn't fulfill Adam's fantasy, so he creates another clone, which also becomes a failed experiment. Unbeknownst to him, Emma sneaked into his lab and created a clone, which she left in an orphanage. Months later, she pretends to adopt, and it is revealed that she cloned Adam, who's now a grown man but has the mind of a child. The nun gets confused about why she chooses Adam, but she lets him go anyway. As Emma takes Adam's clone home, they pass by the insurance company. This catches Trout's attention, so he calls him, wanting to discuss something. However, the clone doesn't recognize him, which Trout finds suspicious. Meanwhile, Adam holds the last strand of Dawn's hair and prays that this clone finally works out. 
However, this one turns out to be an alcoholic, so he sadly puts her euthanies in her drink. Soon after, he places her ashes into a vase, which he then puts in the attic along with the other failed clones. The following day, Trout blends into one of Adam's lectures and tries talking to him after he dismisses the class. Thinking that it's about the insurance money, Adam bluntly tells him that he's not after it. Trout then realizes that this Adam knows him, so he grows more suspicious. Later that day, Adam becomes more desperate to bring Dawn back. Because of this, he uses a sample from a clone. But as predicted, it only explodes. Meanwhile, Trout informs Dawn's parents about Adam's million-dollar life insurance purchase and how he bought it just before their daughter died. Harold doesn't get what he's implying, but Rebecca reckons that her daughter's spirit has been trapped since she saw her in Adam's attic. The following day, the parents confront Adam, and he finally admits that he cloned her. Although he explains that it was all pointless, Rebecca pleads with him to try again, desperate to have her daughter back. Because of this, they team up to look for a sample until they discover a strand of Dawn's hair. As Adam starts cloning, Trout sneaks into his home and discovers remnants of human teeth in the furnace. Meanwhile, Adam brings the baby clone to Rebecca and Harold, who are beyond happy to hold their daughter again. However, when he gets home, he's greeted by Trout, who thinks that he faked his wife's death to claim the insurance money. He theorizes that Adam fell in love with his lab assistant, and when Dawn found out, he killed her. Adam tries explaining his side, but Trout refuses to listen. Just then, Trout tells Adam to give him a drink and he points to the bottle that was infused with euthanies. Adam realizes that he's already in trouble, so he decides to pour him a drink. Trout says he'll approve the claim and keep silent if Adam gives him the money. Adam then pretends to agree, knowing that this threat will soon die. True enough, Trout dies, and he burns him in the furnace. Before doing so, Adam keeps samples of his DNA and uses them to create a clone to prevent anyone from figuring out that he killed the actual Trout. He then calls the police and turns the clone over. Months later, Rebecca and Harold bring Dawn to Adam, and she's exactly like the real one. Because she grew up with her parents, she gained some of Dawn's traits and hobbies. However, when Adam says he loves her, she frowns and replies that she doesn't love him back. Adam argues that she does, and he's sure because he knows her better than herself. He explains further by bringing Dawn to the attic, where he tells her the truth about her existence. This is all too much for her, so she backs away. Before she falls again, Adam stops her, but she ends up smashing the base where the real Dawn's ashes were. While cleaning up, she notices Adam and Dawn's wedding photo, pointing out that he's different there. She then demands to go home. The following day, Adam visits his therapist, and she makes him realize that he can never move on if he doesn't let Dawn go. This snaps him back to reality, so he goes home and unties the clone. He then sends her back to her parents and buries the real Dawn's ashes in the cemetery. When he gets home, he receives a million dollars from the insurance money. One day, Emma is making out with Adam's clone when she suddenly receives a call from the real one. He tells her that he succeeded in making a clone that's exactly like Dawn, but even with her not loving him back, he's okay with it. He now wants to do actual work with Emma, but she refuses and says she's working on her thesis. Because of this, Adam runs to the library but catches his clone making out with Emma. He then punches him, only to realize who it is. After this, Emma explains to Adam that she created the clone because she's in love with him. As they mend their friendship, they wonder what to do with the close. Adam then introduces his clone to Dawn's clone, and the two instantly click. He also gives the insurance money to Rebecca and Harold so they can move where no one knows the clones. Before leaving, Adam says goodbye to Dawn, then he hands the wedding ring to his clone. Months later, Emma graduates and gets to know Adam better. That night, he cooks dinner for her as their relationship is slowly brewing. Elsewhere, Adam's clone proposes to Dawn in a bouncy house, which the real Adam taught him. Dawn accepts, and the two clones continue living happily together.